Well, happy November. I mean, can you even believe that we're saying November? I mean, you know, more than saying uh, happy November, technical difficulties in November. Uh, you know, these browsers and these connections and all these fun stuff, they've just become a way of life. And so that's the beauty of doing what we do, how we do it, because everybody understands it. But back to November, y'all. I mean, it's like another month left in this year. And I don't know about y'all, but I am ready to see 2021 in the rear of view mirror far, far, far away from where I am. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're finding yourself that way and you're like, you know, how do we hold on for just one more month? How, when, you know, Chambers kind of have either or in November, December, either you are crazy busy and so much is going on, whether it's actually events or not, whether it's programming or not, whether it's just you're in the mood or mode, the mood, who's ever in the mood for strategic planning, the mode for strategic planning, um, you're just so crazy. Or maybe on the flip side, you're like, I finally get to take a little break. I finally just kind of get to gather myself from a crazy fall, from a crazy year. And yeah, we're going to strategic plan a little bit, but maybe you're just cleaning out files. I remember my chamber days, uh, we took off before Christmas through New Year's. Some of that we actually got off and then others, we just locked the door so we could simply get crap done because y'all know how it is with people entering and closing those doors and answering the phones and asking all this crazy stuff about Christmas and Thanksgiving and what small business Saturday going to look like this year. And what's this going to do and that going to do and all of that. So regardless of how you are in kind of your workload for here in uh, November, December, uh, we got to got to thinking, well, what really, regardless of the size of chamber from the one person offices that I started in way back in a blue moon to larger metros, really what kind of combines all of us and, and glues us all together for this November, December time frame for chambers. And yes, strategic planning is one of them, but Christmas sales are another. Regardless of if we are deep down into the trenches, helping churn some uh, cash registers to maybe larger chambers that like, is retail really our thing? I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of bigger than retail, but we all have a part in it. We all have opportunities to really help our members. And of course, as we are here in the second year of COVID, uh, how much our members are looking to us to kind of be that answer. So uh, as we typically do for TRC Talks, I want to kind of bring you different things that we are fortunate enough to see all across the country as we go to conferences and work with many of you uh, and just kind of highlight what's out there and what's available. And so as we were thinking through what November was going to be and how we were going to look like it, uh, you know, I get excited about Black Friday shopping. I love me some Black Friday shopping. I really don't like Black Friday shopping as much as I like Black Friday watching. There's a difference there, people, a big difference in that process. And so we do a whole lot of watching on Black Friday. But, you know, really Black Friday has kind of morphed. First, it was, you know, Small Business Saturday. And then we added, you know, Cyber Monday. And now we're at Thankful Tuesday. So we're almost in a week of Black Friday. And then, you know, the last couple of years, we can't look without it, you know, extending a whole month in that particular process. Uh, I'm here in Northwest Arkansas, the hub and the birthplace of Walmart. And I swear we have Black Friday sales every Friday of November up here. And I don't know if it's all throughout, but at least it is here. So, through that process, we were like, how can we give y'all information that maybe you could use to help your members, whether it's just an informational distribution or maybe it's actually doing something. And immediately, I didn't have to think long and I didn't have to think hard. The first thing that came to my mind was actually a person, a good friend of mine, Alicia Cook from Opportunity Strategies came to mind. Uh, she is known in our Chamber of Commerce world. And 
in the economic development world as somebody that helps in strategic planning and really uh, looking at professional facilitation. And I tell you, that's a skill in itself in that particular process to make everybody heard and feel welcome. And she does a lot of trainings and she's just kind of known uh, as a great strategic planner. But few people know there's another little layer to opportunities that Alicia provides. And in that process, uh, a lot of it's come from her 28 years of experience in this industry that we all love. But a lot of what she does kind of on the sub level is customized customer service training. And in that aspect, she does a secret shopper program and all of those particulars that really give chambers a tool to take to their transactional members. And so with that particular aspect, I thought we've got to bring her on here during the uh, during the holiday season to kind of give us some of her secrets. So Alicia, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it, I knew you for a while before I even realized there was this kind of sub level to uh, opportunities that you provide. And I, I wanted to kind of share that with people because a lot might just know you as the strategic planner or the board organizer or facilitator. But really, some of the opportunities that you do does provide you kind of with an inside look at what merchants, what a lot of people that we think as that transactional uh, uh, member looks for in uh, Thanksgiving and into Christmas and that type of thing. Why don't you just start off with kind of giving that of kind of what you do and how you have come about looking at it that way? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Well, so for years, I have um, had a customer service workshop for Chambers and it's, you know, they bring me in and I teach their members about customer service excellence, okay. how to, uh, you know, how to prepare their, their shop for the type of customers that they want to have and to serve. And so it's about seven or eight years ago, a chamber had asked me to come in and do this workshop and she called me about a month before I was to come in and deliver it. And she said, Hey, I have an idea. She said, could you come secret shop 10 or 12 of my businesses prior to the customer service workshop and give them some tips on what they could do better? And I said, well, I'm not certified in secret shopping. And she said, well, do you need to be? And I said, I don't know. I haven't ever done that before. And she said, well, if you're going to tell them what to do and what not to do, then I certify you as a secret shopper. She said, you can, you, if you're going to tell them what to do, you should be able to discern what they did or didn't do. I said, okay, well, that's good enough. So anyway, that's what started this, uh, this secret, uh, secret shopper um, service uh, from uh, probably seven or eight years ago. And so now over the years, several chambers, economic development groups, and even cities have hired me to come in and secret, secret shop their merchants and then uh, provide a report. Some of them want to report, some don't, but then come back in and do the customer service workshop on the back end and kind of customize it to the things that I saw, areas of improvement and areas of celebration for that community. Well, and what I really like about that particular model is that you truly are a secret shopper. You right. know, as chamber president, as I would go to different communities, kind of in my earlier uh, part of a tenure, some chamber members would ask me to secret shop. And I was like, you know, I've been on the front page of the paper for a while coming. I don't know that I can really give that kind of anonymity to it. But right. you are just this kind of out of towner coming in, what's that, uh, that, that, that feeling? So um, in doing that, as you kind of start that process, I think a lot of times we as chambers begin to think through our merchants and, uh, you know, our retail establishments and all of that, that really um, kind of that first impression is really when I open the door and hear the ding dong, ding, ding, right. I'm here type thing. But it really starts so much earlier than that in this kind of technical world of Facebook and Google and social, right. wouldn't you think? Absolutely. And I think that's why the most important part, they can't shop with you if they can't find you. And one of the things that we've seen during COVID is that, you know, people change their hours, their, their, 
their hours aren't necessarily matching everywhere. So one of the first things that I recommend is talk to your merchants and make sure that their hours and days of operation are number one accurate and that they're on their website, their Facebook, their Instagram, their Yelp, all across the board that all needs to be accurate. And they also need to have claimed their business on Google because if you're going to say coffee shop near me, Google only finds the near me for registered businesses. And so you, every business in their community has to be have, you know, registered as a Google business or else people can't drive to them. People can't find their website. People can't find their hours of operation and most importantly, directions on how to get there. So um, that's one of the most important things right now, because we have so many businesses who have not corrected their hours. Well, and I would say not even in, I mean, you've got the workforce issue. Have they had to reduce in those particulars? But I think if we weren't even in this COVID workforce issue uh, type environment that we're in, typically a lot of businesses do different holiday hours. Right. And so as a shopper, you know, I'm thinking, well, I'm so used to doing that. But if they're going to extend a couple of hours, I think it's important to let people know that during that holiday season. So really kind of if you haven't looked at it in a couple of years, it's time, huh? Yes, absolutely. And um, uh, Google will allow you to put holiday hours on there. So you can you can go in and adjust. Uh, business owners can go in and adjust their hours throughout the holiday season. So it's just something good to check on, you know, every Saturday or Sunday or Monday before the week starts. Just get make sure that your holiday hours are up to date, your COVID hours are up to date, and that your website is connected um, in case people need to find other information on there. Because I'll tell you, there's nothing more mm, to me than driving across town thinking I'm going to go into a business and they're sitting there closed. I'm probably not coming back. Right. And the hours on Google say they're open. Or the right. hours on their door say they're open. You know, so all that has to, it has to match on the door, the window, Facebook, Yelp, Instagram, Google, everywhere. So in that initial impression, if I get there because everything's right, how can chambers really convey to their businesses? Because um, that's really a lot of what, what we're doing is just sharing information to our businesses to say, hey, we're gearing up. We know it's here. Kind of do these things. How can chambers convey to their members to, hey, that initial greeting when that ding dong happens is very important. And I mean, do you have thoughts of what that needs to include is just a simple, hey, good, or does it need to be a little bit more than that? Well, it kind of depends on how busy I think the business is. So the most important thing is to acknowledge the person walking in the door. And so if the if the store owner or the clerk is on the phone or helping another customer, of course, you want to take care of the customer that's in front of you first. But just in a little wave across the way that says, hey, I see you um, or, you know, point to the phone. I'll be with you in just a minute. Just acknowledge the person walking in the door and try to do it in the first six to 10 seconds, because when I'm secret shopping, I have a timer in my pocket and I time how long it takes for somebody to, for the initial greeting. And that goes in their report. So even if I can see that you're busy and I can see that you can't wait on me right now, when you acknowledge me, what it does is it sets up the, the, th the idea for me that I'm about to be waited on, that you're going to take care of me, that you've seen me and acknowledged me. And I think that's the first step for setting up a good customer service experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I know it's true personally. I mean, you know, Lord knows that I let my opinions fly as loose as they come. And many times we've been in a store and I told Brittany, I was like, I don't guess I care we're here. I mean, you know, there's just this, especially like if you happen to be the only person in the store, it's like, what else y'all going to do? Y'all been bored all day, obviously. You can talk right. to me type thing. When you have that, you know, whether it's an online impression, whether it's that feeling that you get or kind of, I think of several merchant stores that I get this woof of a smell that just makes me, you know, inviting and those type of things. To me, I count that all as first impression stuff. You know, what, what I feel about that. Sometimes first impression doesn't go along with if I stay in there a while, maybe that impression changes a bit for whatever reason. Right. What do you think is more important, the first impression or the lasting impression that you get? 
This is a great question, Jason. I think that the lasting impression is the most important part because if even if you come into, let's say I'm a shop owner and you come in and you don't get waited on as quickly or, you know, you're not getting exactly what you need. If I can make it right before you leave, I have a chance to correct a situation. So I think it's the lasting impression. I think it's what the customer walks out the door thinking, smelling, uh, having experienced that's going to sit with them. So you still have a chance to correct a, fir a bad first impression as long as they're still in your shop. That's okay. my that's my uh impression of that of the first impression versus last lasting impression it what i walk out the door with is what i'm gonna tell my friends and what i'm gonna remember about the experience most okay very true there you know this is something that <clears throat> sometimes uh I, I think part of it's the chamber part of me i think it's part of the personality and all of that but there is nothing to me especially in this height of the holiday season and I'm wanting to buy something or there's a product there that might not be there, but it says it's there. And, and I start this kind of inquisitive process with the staff that's mm -hmm. there. And then I kind of get this mm, or this kind of fear goes over them where a lot of times Brittany, my wife, will be like, quit scaring them. Shut up. Um, <laughs> that type of thing. But it's like I want an answer. I want a something. And I think sometimes staff either they're not trained right or whatever it might be but sometimes i think they they feel like they can't give an answer so in a, in, a, in a heightened time of a lot of transactions what do you feel owners can do in giving their staff uh, empowerment to make decisions empowerment to uh you know just kind of rectify an issue because let's just count it unless they're going to take up residence at the office or the store for the next, you know, five, six weeks, it's going to be a lot of busy time that they might not be there. What can they do to help staff help them? Okay. Well, I think there's a great opportunity here and I see so many of these opportunities missed, Jason. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. So a couple years ago, right before COVID, I was secret shopping in a community and, um, you know, one of the things I like to do is to test the clerk if they can, uh, you know, make an exception or, or serve me in some way. And I found a handbag because I actually do buy stuff sometimes. <laughs> on my own. So I found this little clutch in this uh, lady's boutique and it had like a ballpoint pen mark on it, you know, had a mark on the back of it. And I could probably get it off with some goo gone or something. But I took it up to the register and I said, I'd like to buy this bag, but it's a little bit damaged. Um, you know, what, what can you do to, you know, so that I can buy this? Can you mark this down so I can get it as is? Well, oh, lo and behold, it turned into like a congressional, an act of Congress. So this lady, the clerk, she has to call her boss. Her boss doesn't, the owner doesn't answer the phone. Then she texts the owner. Then the owner texts back and says, well, what is it? Let me see it. And then she makes her text her a picture of the damage. And all this time I'm waiting and looking at my watch, you know, going, I'm just, this is terrible. She doesn't even know I'm secret shopping her. Mm -hmm. And um, she finally comes back and um, the, the owner says, um, well, I'm going to have to, you're going to have to video it to I me. Mean, like a picture wasn't good. It was just all this rigmarole about getting it, you know, 10% off or something. So anyway, boils down to it. The lady finally gives me a discount, but I'm in there about 12, eight or 12, I can't remember now, eight or 10 minutes or something, something outrageous. And, you know, the purse was like $40. It was like a $4 discount, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes down to it. So the point of this is that if you're going to employ people and you can share it, you know, y'all can share this with your merchants. If you're going to employ someone to run your cash register, to have the key to your store, by all means, give them the authority to make a $4 or $10 decision. Uh, it's just, it's crazy to me that an employee can't make a, a, a 5 or $10 decision in a boutique. So mm -hmm. it's giving them the, you know, the authority to make those decisions. And I'll give you one other example. My dad used to own a restaurant years ago. And he was all about customer service. And he told all of his waiters and waitresses, 
if the problem comes all the way up to me, the whole table's getting comped. So it's on you to comp what you need to comp. You comp the dessert, the drinks, whatever you need to do, the appetizer to make it right. But don't bring it up to the manager. Just you do it. And you know what? Almost nothing went wrong in his restaurant because this, the staff had the authority to bring an extra appetizer or take something off the receipt. And I think when, when employers um, empower their employees to make decisions like that, not only is the customer service experience better, but the whole operation runs better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's to a point, had you not been secret shopping, would you have really stayed there 10 minutes? You know, Probably not. At some point, most people are like, okay, it's not worth it. By uh, you told me that lasting impression by this back and forth. Right. Then there's, you know, the ornery idiots like me who, you know, Brittany's going to wait in the car because I'm getting my four dollars. Right. Now, the lasting impression is very negative in that process. And I'm coming back out and I'm telling everybody on the Facebook Live about the story here because it's become a story. So right. I think sometimes even that lasting impression is now carrying over because you can, you know, I mean, it was like this past summer when we went to a Dairy, dairy Queen, Queen and the entire employees just left us and I didn't get any floats. You know, everybody now knows that story because I went on Facebook Live with it. And so I think it was we have crazy. to be careful with that. Yes. in what we provide those employees to do. You talk a lot about, and of course, we get the the privilege of being at conferences together and, and sharing stories with Chamber and, and those type of things. If I've heard you say it once, I've heard you say it many times, customer service experience excellence. And, you know, the first couple of times I heard that, I thought, is she even, and then we we, we got to know it. Share with people what you mean when you say that. Okay. Well, what I mean by the customer service experience excellence is that it's the number one, un, uh, you know, underrated employee tool that that business owners and managers can do. But coincidentally, it's also can it also can be the most expensive mistake that you make by not providing customer service. Um, so I think it, you know, and it doesn't have you don't have to send them. Great if you can send them to. Disney, you know, or, or uh, Rich Carlton customer service workshops. That's wonderful. But if you can't, at least get them some kind of training, something like, you know, how to greet customers, how to talk to people, how to provide active listening skills. Active listening is a skill that can be taught. Um, and you want people to be waiting on your customers who know how to listen to them, how to assist customers, how to serve customers, how to thank customers. And one of the things that is missing almost everywhere is inviting people back. Thank you for coming in today. We hope you'll come back again or hope to see you again. Or there's a, a, a burger place here in Austin that uh, when you drive off, the sign says, see you tomorrow. And so they're inviting you back. And I think that's a, a missed opportunity that you used to see a lot in stores. Um, but, if you know, they've got to learn how to do those things or else they're not going to earn repeat business. Think about your own places where you like to shop. I like to shop where places where people make me feel welcome, where they chat with me and they make me feel comfortable and they're engaging and they want me to come back and spend more money with them. And so how do you instill that in your employees, especially in a, a busy you know, holiday season, and you might be lacking with staff this holiday season, but, you know, still being friendly and active listening are some of the most important pieces of, of the customer service excellence. And of course, there's also, you know, quick greetings, like I said a minute ago, is telephone etiquette, how you sound on the phone, all of those things go into the experience that your customer is going to have. Alicia, you know, a, a lot of what you're saying here, I, being from the chamber world for so long, I can hear some chamber people already going, well, duh. I mean, those are just basic. I mean, eh. I, right. I see that coming off, but how would you respond to that to a chamber to say, yeah, they might be basic, but are they coming across to your merchants employees? How do you get the merchant to understand maybe a return to basics mentality with those things? Well, you're right. My experience has been that the chamber executives that I work with, they know that that their members need this. They know that their store owners need this. 
But a lot of times store owners, there's two things that I've seen, Jason. One is that a lot of store owners think, well, my neighbor needs customer service, not me. You know, like everybody, I take care of everyone in my shop. But the second thing is that business owners are mistaken if they think that their customers get the same level of customer service when they're in their shop versus when they're not in their shop, the owner. So if the owner's there, oftentimes customers get a different level of customer service than they may get if the owner's not there. So that's why I recommend, even if you don't hire a secret shopper like me, get some of your, get one of your friends that's coming in for the holidays that doesn't live here you know, pay them to come in or give them a, a free dinner if they'll come in and shop your store in your absence. That's what I tell some of the chambers to tell their business owners, because the experience can really be different depending on um, if the owner's in the shop or not. So those two things, owner presence and then owner uh, almost denial that uh, they, they think their their people, you know, know how to do it all. And the chances are that none They're of us wrong. are Chances are community to be a little bit nicer, a little bit more patient, a little better listener, those mm -hmm. things. So, you know, you've been doing secret shopping for a while, and I know that you've got eight secret shopping tips. Now, y'all, we ain't giving all eight of them to you today. Sorry. Mm -mm. No, no. We give you a little taste uh, in that particular aspect. One, because otherwise we'd be here all afternoon and you get a seminar out of this and it's supposed to just be a little, a little bit for you. But there is one of them that I absolutely loved. It's called Enliven the Senses. And I think you've hit on it a little bit throughout today, but really expound upon that one particular tip. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and remind me in a second to tell you the bagel experience story in a minute, because it kind of goes back to that customer service um, excellence thing in just a second. But yeah, Enliven the Senses, what I mean by that is, Encourage your merchants to consider what the experience is like walking into their store. So what do I see? Do I see smiling faces or do I see exhausted, angry, born, you know, burnt out faces of employees? Do I see things um, attractively merchandised or can I see that back junk closet with boxes and stuff all over the floor? So what do I see? Uh, do I see live plants or do I see that old, dusty, filthy ficus tree from 1987 in the corner of your store? You know what I'm talking about. I do. I um, do. So also, what do I smell? Um, I have secret shop and just in real life shop places that just smell enchanting. Last year, I was shopping in a store in Georgetown, Texas on the square. And I was just going to check it out. I didn't really have anything I was searching for. But when I walked in, it smelled like Christmas. It was during the holiday season and they had this super expensive, outrageously expensive candle. And the lady told me that that's what it was. And I was like, well, I don't care how much it is. I'm buy it smelled so good. I had to buy it. And so, you know, and I've also shot places where I'm like, oh, a cat lives in here. Uh -huh. Right, the antique store where the cat lives. And so mm -hmm. if that's what I'm smelling, I'm probably not going to stay in there too long. So think about that. Also, what can I taste when you say enliven the senses? Um, do you have any samples? Are you selling uh, like some pecans or some cupcakes? Do you have a sample that you can give out? Um, um, do you have snacks? Um, I love it in the holidays when you walk in and somebody's got a, a glass of champagne that they'll serve you or hot chocolate or coffee. You know, are your merchants doing just a little? There's something psychological, too, about mm -hmm. feeding people. Um, the sustenance part of reciprocity. That, that's why they give you the free uh, samples at Costco and at Walmart and your grocery store, because we automatically set up for reciprocity when we taste something from someone. So do you have anything like that? Some kind of snack, even a bottled water while you shop. People are likely to linger longer when there's something that they can taste in your shop. Um, also, what do I hear? Do I hear music playing? There is nothing worse than being in, you can attest to this, but shopping somewhere and it is like deafening silence. I mean, you can hear the person behind the counter breathing. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> and then you're almost like, are they watching me? You know, mine are horror that. movies. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So really, um, the sound, and that's one thing. Growing up, my parents were big entertainers and, and had a lot of parties and stuff. And my mom always said, no party's complete without the right music. And so I tell all of my merchants and my customer service in my, you know, eight secrets of a secret shopper workshop, have some kind of music playing during the holidays, play the right, if it's, if it's a lively kind of shop, play that lively Christmas music. If you're, it's a really low key luxury shop, then you want to play some, you know, old Christmas carols and tunes that, that make people kind of slow down a little bit. One example, <laughs> you're going to die laughing. I did a secret shopping of a barbecue restaurant about two years ago. Now, what kind of music do you expect to hear in a barbecue restaurant? Well, it's got to be country. Well, what do little you bit, think? A little bit of Dolly, maybe. Maybe a little bit of Dolly, a little bit of country. No, it was Metallica. It was hard rock. Okay, I'm eating my barbecue, and it's like, da -na 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 -na. So it was incongruent <clears throat> of what was what was going on. And so you want to make sure that your store has some kind of music playing that's congruent with um, with the vibe of the store. And, you know, whether that's a CD or a Pandora playing or Spotify or whatever that is, uh, but don't have commercials <laughs> in yeah. your store. Plate. So have that nice vibe of music. And finally, what can I touch? What can I feel? Is there some kind of lush sofa I can sit in? Are there like fluffy pillows? Are there are there things that have a tactile um, attraction in your store? So you know what what what's what is there that, um, that that I might enjoy touching and picking up? Or are there signs everywhere that says you know you break it you buy it? Am I shamed for touching something, or am I encouraged for touching something? And also temperature goes in here. You know I have walked into stores that are absolutely freezing and burning up, and so I'm not going to stay and spend a lot of money if my te if the temperature is not somewhat comfortable in there too. Mm -hmm. so, and candles, you know I talked about the smell. So anyway, that see, smell, touch, hear, feel, all of those things are really important to. Bring out all the senses. Make make me leave there going, I don't know what it was about that place, but I just loved being in there. Well, I didn't even think about temperature till you just said it, but it's so true. I mean, for me, if I walk into a very hot room, I'm going to get a migraine like that. It's just what happens to me. So right. if I walk in somewhere that's very heated, I'm out immediately. I don't even, I, don't, I can't even linger. And then Brittany's, hurrying up because I'm outside and it's so temperature does play a role in it. I wouldn't have even thought about that. Yeah. Really. You know, a lot of what you've said to me, I'm a very checklist minded person, check, check, check. So I think even if it's an aspect for um, maybe owners that think they are better than the other ones, or they don't have a problem, those type of things, really a lot of what you've said here takes me back. Um, April Bragg at the Robbins regional chamber Oh, I don't know, a few months ago during that whole workforce issue and people having to maybe close or open depending on work, she sent out kind of a toolkit, a, a checklist for businesses saying, hey, if you're having to close for something, you might want to consider this. I really see a lot of these tips, while they might be basic, a lot of people not realizing it or going, hey, have I changed the candle scent in forever. I really see chambers being able to kind of compile some of this. And if they do nothing, if they are not a very active chamber, maybe doing open houses and driving people into their establishment, at least sending it out now, you know, here a couple of weeks before Black Friday to say, hey, kind of get your business up to snuff. I think that could be a tool that they could use and the businesses might go, oh yeah, this is kind of a refresher I need to have. Absolutely. And I love the idea of a checklist. I haven't seen April's checklist for that specific thing, but I love that idea is, you know, are you, you know, if you just want to get your house in order for your, your brick and mortar store before the holidays, here's some things to consider, you know, and it's, it's, you know, sweeping the floors and cleanliness is a really important part, dusty, you know, sweeping the floors and also the entrance ways. We really didn't get much into cleanliness today, but 
that's a really important component of when I pull my car or I walk up to your shop, is there dirt and dust and leaves? The leaves are all falling right now, but I don't want to fall in the leaves. <laughs> I want to be able to have a clear path to your front door. And so is your front door swept? And, you know, doesn't matter what happened there the night before or whatever, but sweeping your sweeping your front way and your parking lot and just making it look welcome. The whole thing is to make people feel welcome and comfortable to come in. I mean, I was at a new chiropractor the other day. I was trying another one out. And when I laid on the chiropractic table, I just looked and I can't tell you the amount of dust and junk on Whoa. the floor. I was like, peace out. I don't care what kind of adjustment this is. Right. Not coming back here. So it does begin to affect a, a lot of what that particular aspect is. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask you this kind of in wrapping up, you know, we're both from Louisiana. We've got to have a little bit of Louisiana culture, especially when I get a Louisiana person here with me. Yeah. Uh, y'all know I love land yap, giving you a little something extra. So in all of this, if you had to pick out something, uh, Alicia, that you just kind of wanted to say, hey, here's a little bit of something extra that you really need to make sure that your merchants understand in this holiday season. What would you give them? Well, the best land yap that I can say is get to encourage every chamber member that you have that has a brick and mortar to find their own land yap. There is something, a little something extra that, you know, and that's like Jason said, Laniap is something that they neither paid for nor expected. It's just a little extra little glory uh, in, a, in the shopping experience. And every merchant has something that they can do or give or say or provide that makes just a little shining difference. I'll give you one example. I told you that my dad um, owned a restaurant years ago. And on Friday and Saturday night, Jason, people would line up out the door to, you know, wait on a table. And um, daddy always said, if they're going to, you know, they can pick any restaurant in town. If they're going to pick my restaurant, the least we can do is go out there and give them free appetizers. And so he would tell his host or hostess, if there's a line forming and you're taking names, you call back to the kitchen and you have somebody take a platter of appetizers out there and it could just be a little dixie cup you know a little <laughs> container of red beans and rice or or sugar cookies or whatever and pass those out to everybody in line and you know what he used to say he said you think they're going to go across the street now no uh -huh. they're going to stay there because you gave them something extra that they didn't pay for and that they didn't expect and people were so grateful to get a free appetizer and if they had waited a long time they might be seated and dad might put a, a, a whole order of appetizers on the table saying, thank you for waiting. We appreciate you supporting our small business here. So I encourage small businesses everywhere. Could you give a cookie away? Have you ever visited a church where they give cookies away or, you know, visiting someplace where they say, hey, we got some cookies here or uh, whatever that is. You can find something that they can give away. Um, that they can make people feel special. So there's not one specific thing. It's find that one special thing for your own shop. Well, and people say something like cookies. I mean, everybody goes to Doubletree to get the chocolate chip cookies at the Doubletree. I right. mean, there's something that becomes synonymous to you going up and beyond in that particular process. And Next so I, I would say a lot of that for you, you chamber folks out there, what can you do? You know, how do you take all of this information it's one information that you know. Uh, it's information that Alicia shared with us. There's even more to Alicia's depth in knowledge that we can't necessarily share with you, but y'all can absolutely reach out and she could share that. You know, we live in a time of Zoom these days. So you can turn around a seminar fairly quickly for maybe your merchants and those transactional members that are looking for something, put it together and send it out to them in those particular aspects to just help their their monetization of the holiday season as it's to come. But, you know, maybe it's just putting a toolkit together and saying, hey, we're here. And of course, when you put a toolkit together, don't forget to put a sponsor on it. Hello, make some money that way Hello. as well through that particular sponsor. Man. 
<laughs> Absolutely. We're always going to find some sponsorship somewhere around in here. So through that process and, and I, too, I guess we will leave them with, uh, you have been gracious enough to extend that if someone wants to uh, bring you in for a customer service seminar or secret shopping or those type of things, that you're going to give them a discount if they book by the end of the year and they can reference TRC Talks to you uh, in reaching out. I know some information was scrolling here a, a little while ago, uh, but thank you for offering that. It's a good way sometimes for maybe especially those chambers that don't necessarily have a whole lot to do in November and December to kind of just gear up their merchants for the beginning of the year. So thank you for sharing that little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to offer any of your uh any of your uh, viewers today, any of your listeners that are watching a $500 discount off any, yes, I know, off any workshop. Um, we've got the eight secrets of a secret shopper lunch and learn. I can come out to your community and do it in person, or we can do it on zoom and, um, and you can broadcast it to your members. If you're still um, doing, you know, virtual stuff, or if you're still partially doing zoom stuff, so yeah, I'm happy. I've got a few more slots before the holidays. Um, and then I've got a lot at the end of, uh, well, I say a lot, I've got like three days at the end of December and January too. So if it's a little too late for them to do it this year, we can get them ramped up for the, um, you know, for the spring Absolutely. break. Spring well, thank break you for that. Now I've got to end with, I mean, here, Louisiana. Uh, so, you know, gumbo or jambalaya? Oh, wow. That's really tough. You didn't tell me we we're going to have these <laughs> Surprise! Kind of <laughs> questions. <laughs> well, I would say if I'm cooking it, it would be jambalaya because that's easier to cook. But if I'm eating it, it's going to be gumbo because okay, gumbo okay, okay. Is, is so delicious. Crawfish or king cake? Probably crawfish. Probably crawfish. Uh huh. Yep. Boudin or alligator? Man, these are tough. Uh, I'm going to have to say boudin because my dad's picking up some tomorrow to bring home oh, for Thanksgiving. Oh. So. Now, some of you people are like, what are they talking about? Well, you just have to Google it. Uh, yes. And you'll be like, well, how do you spell it? Google it, not the way you sound it out. Okay, people? Uh, yes. It's some good Louisiana food. And if you're like, I don't know what that is, go visit Louisiana and uh, you'll know what we're talking about. But mm -hmm. uh, Alicia, thank you for spending time here before uh, the holiday mad rush. Hopefully, a lot of chambers got some good ideas. And uh, all you chambers watching, y'all remember to share to your chamber peers and pick up some good ideas and get some things out for your merchants. But y'all have a good day. We'll chat with you soon. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks for having me, Jason.